Railclone 2.4 introduces a host of new features focused on improving usability. In this video, we'll take a tour of some of the most significant and explain how to use them so you can start working faster right away. First, we'll look at the brand new UVWX form operator. This allows you to easily edit and randomize the offset, tiling and rotation of existing UVW coordinates. V-Ray is required to maintain instancing when using this operator. However, other renderers are supported by disabling instancing. To do this, go to the display rollout and turn off Use Instancing Engine. To help illustrate how this operator works, in the following example, this texture has been applied to a simple tile mesh. The object has been mapped before adding it to the rail clone object so that only one of the 256 colored alphanumeric tiles is displayed. So to use the new operator to adjust UVWs for all segments identically, you simply follow these steps. Wire the segment to the UVW XForm operator's input, go to the UVW XForm operator's properties and change the map channel, or if you'd prefer to affect all the channels, turn on apply to all channels. If you want to adjust a limited selection of channels, for example map channels 1 and 3, you can use multiple UVW XForm operators wired together in series. The fixed group then allows you to edit the tiling, the offset, and the rotation of the existing mapping. As you can see, there are independent controls for each of the U, V, and W axes. In addition, the UVWX form operator also includes powerful randomizing features. Using these, you can create tremendous amounts of variation from a single map. To do this, still in the UVWX form operator's properties, switch to the Random tab. You can now randomize the offset, rotation, and tiling by adding a start and an end value to define the range for each of the attributes you wish to randomize. For an example of this technique in action, let's take a look at a cladding style. It uses this texture. As in the previous example, a single plank has been mapped prior to importing it into RailClone, so that only a small portion of the texture is displayed. Here's how this looks on the facade before randomizing it. As you can see, the texture repetition is obvious. So now if we go back to the UVW XForm operator and turn on random offset, then set a start and an end range for the U and V axes, you see we get a lot of variation with very little obvious repetition. You might wonder why I used 0.1 meters for the range. This is because the spinners in the UVWX form operator use scene units. If you're using real world map sizes that makes sense and behaves as you'd expect, but if you're using standard mapping it's not necessarily obvious what measurements correspond to 0 to 1 in UVW space. The answer is that 0 to 1 in UVW space corresponds to 0 to 1 system units. To find out what your system units are, go to Customize, Unit Setup, and click on System Unit Setup. In this scene, the system units are in centimeters and the display units are in meters, which explains why 0.1 meters is used for the offset value. So as well as selecting any value from within a set range, you can also constrain the operator to use only increments of a given step value. For example, you could set the rotation range from zero to 360 degrees, and then by using a step increment of 90, you ensure it only returns values of 0, 90, 180, and 270 degrees. You can do the same thing for offset and tile. Let's take a look at a typical usage. In this example, I have a tile mesh and a single texture with 25 tiles in a 5x5 grid. Using the old workflow, we'd have to slice this texture up and create a multi sub object material with 25 material IDs. Using this operator, we now only need one material. As in the previous examples, we've already edited the UVs on the segment source geometry so that only one tile is displayed. To randomize this so that it takes one of the 25 tiles, wire the segment to a new UVWX form operator, go to the random tab and activate offset, add a start value of minus 10 millimeters and an end value of 10 millimeters to define the U and V ranges. The scene units here are in centimeters and the display units are in millimeters. Enter a step increment value. This should be the UVW space divided by the number of tiles along each side of the texture. In this case, that's a UV space of one divided by five tiles. So we need to enter 0.2. The random values returned by the operator will be multiples of this figure. We can add further variation by randomizing the rotation, enter a start value of zero and an end value of 360. Next, enter a step value of 90 degrees. After applying this operator, the texture is displayed on each segment will now be one of 25 tiles with four possible rotation angles. 
It's often desirable to use the size of a segment's geometry to drive other properties or expressions in a style. Until now, we had to hardwire those values into the style using a numeric or a constant parameter. In RailClone 2.4, it's now possible to export the current size of a segment from any node. To do this, you just right click on the node, select Export Attribute, and choose the size you want to be exported. The exposed attribute will then be added to the bottom of the list of output slots. Let's take a look at an example. In this style, the height, width, and depth of the table is being used to automatically place the plates, cutlery, and bottles on top. In addition, the plates are automatically being placed halfway along the table's length and width. Because these values are derived from the segment's dimensions, we can easily change the table and the objects on top are repositioned automatically. RailClone 2.4 introduces a new evenly mode. The original mode is now renamed distance and behaves exactly as before. In this mode, evenly segments are distributed according to a distance parameter, and as the size of the array increases, additional evenly divisions are created. In the new count mode, which can be selected from the drop-down list found in the rules evenly group, the array is divided using a fixed count value. Irrespective of the size of the array, the number of evenly divisions remains the same. In this example, you can see that the number of houses in the terrace is unchanged, even as the array is lengthened. Generators can now use padding values. These are used to add offsets to the left, right, top and bottom of A2S generators or at the start and end of L1S generators. All calculations, such as evenly spacing, are based on the new lengths of the array after the offset has been applied. This is particularly useful for instances where you need multiple generators to jigsaw together. For example, this window style has one generator to create the surround and it uses the full lengths of the array on the X and Y axis and then a second generator creates the window itself. To prevent it from overlapping the outer surround, padding is added to the top, bottom, left, and right of the generator. This style also uses evenly count mode to ensure that the amount of vertical and horizontal elements remains the same as the window is resized. RailClone 2 has always been able to generate box mapped UV coordinates that follow the array. When this feature is turned on, instead of using the UV coordinates derived from the segment's geometry, a continuous box mapping is seamlessly tiled along the full length of the RailClone object. Until now, it's only been possible to UV map a single channel, but RailClone 2.4 introduces the ability to box map multiple channels. All that's needed is to add the channel numbers in the map channels input separated by a space. When you're making styles to be used by other people in your studio, or even for wider distribution, it's helpful to be able to include a description and instructions for use that can easily be accessed directly within 3D Studio Max. Version 2.4 includes the ability to add text descriptions. To do this, you just open the style editor, then from the style dropdown at the top of the style editor, click edit description to open the style description window. Enter a description. Normally this will contain information for new users about how to use the style. You can also see a list of all the base objects and parameters used. When you're done, click OK and close the style editor. Whenever you want to view the description without having to open the style editor, just go to the modify panel, open the style rollout and click on the help button. A dialog will open containing the style's description, including the base objects and the parameters used. In addition to the features we've just mentioned, there's a host of style editor workflow improvements to help speed up the creation process. Simplifying the procedure for importing multiple segments was always high up on our wish list. Take this style for example. I want to create a sequence comprising 20 segments. Importing the old fashioned way, one at a time, used to take a while. In RailClone 2.4, the process is much simpler. First, you need to create a new segment object by dragging it from the items list to the construction view, and then enter any general, deform, or transform settings that will be used for all segments before going any further. This node will be used as the template for all other segments, so it's important to add these settings now to avoid doing it 20 times later. Once you've done that, right click on the new segment and select Clone Multiple. A Select Objects window opens, pick the objects in the scene you wish to add to the RailClone style, and then click Clone. RailClone will generate a new segment node for each of the selected items. So you now have all 20 segments imported, each one using the same settings as the cloned source. Of course, bulk importing segments isn't much help if you still have to wire them one at a time. Thankfully, RailClone 2.4 can save you time here too. It is now possible to wire multiple nodes to compose, sequence, random and selector operators. To do this, just marquee select the nodes you wish to attach, and then drag any one of the node's outputs to the operator's input. It's as easy as that. These two improvements used together should save a lot of time for styles that use a large number of segments. 
Another potentially time-consuming scenario is when you want to swap a node that is connected to a lot of inputs. Previously you'd have to reconnect each one manually. Now all that's necessary is to drag the output of one node onto the output of another and all their connections will be automatically swapped. To save you valuable typing time, nodes connected to exported parameters are now automatically renamed, and if you've exported a number of parameters or attributes you no longer need, you can now clear them quickly by right-clicking on the node, going to the Parameters or Attributes menu, and clicking Clear All. In addition to making parameters easy to find, add and remove, we've added some brand new ones. Dynamically generated parameters like the count value of the sequence operator and the presence value for the random operator can now be exported and wired for editing from the modify panel. Let's take the style created as part of the ceiling tutorial as an example. If we wanted to edit the number of tiles between the lights, in previous versions it would be necessary to open the style editor. In 2.4 you can export the counters, wire them to a numeric node and then close the style editor. The pattern can now be edited from the parameters rollout in the modify panel. I'll do the same thing for a randomised operator. Let's say I want the ability to add occasional vents instead of lights. Export the vents presence parameter and wire it to a numeric node. If you go to the modify panel, it's now possible to adjust the vents probability directly from this panel. In addition, we've added an on-off exportable parameter for all nodes to allow you to easily enable or disable features of your style. To use it, just right click on a node in this case I'll use the randomize operator from the ceiling example and then click export parameters and click on off. Next create a new numeric node and wire it to the exported on off input, set the type to boolean and rename it if necessary. And as you can see you can now enable and disable the node from the parameters rollout in the modify panel. For operators like this that use multiple segments the one attached to the first input is used if the node is disabled. And finally, Railclone 2.4 introduces the first phase of our library overhaul. In this release, you'll find improved styles in the architecture, exterior, fences, metal and vinyl libraries, the architecture interior railings library, and in civil engineering, the pavements, curbs and sidewalks have been revamped. Many of these new styles make use of the base splines material IDs. For example, the vinyl fences use material ID 2 to add a gate while the pavements use ID2 to introduce a drop curb. Of course, to see how to use these new styles, you can always click on the help button in the style rollout to bring up a description and usage instructions. We hope you enjoy these new features and improvements and find them useful in your work. This is only a selection of the most significant changes and fixes. For a comprehensive list, we recommend checking out the full release notes on our website. Stay tuned for more tips and tricks videos, or if you want to know more about Railclone, please see our website, uh, the updated reference section, or visit the tutorials page.